right, where are we? Verse 24. All right. Chapter 1. Smriti yo api atme va devataha sarvaha navadwari pure dehi kshetragyam chapi maam vidhi samaha sarveshu bhuteshu upadrishta nu manta cha uttamaha purushas tvanyaha Ashariram Sharireshu Ityadya Tasmat Jatyan Tasmat Jatyan Paya Sanskara Varjita Stwamiti Siddham Smriti text two elucidate the same truth. For example, all gods verily are the self, the self in the city of nine gates. Know the individual self to be myself, the same in all beings, the witness and approver. The supreme being is different, residing in all bodies but itself devoid of any, and so on. Therefore, it is established that you are without any connection with birth, lineage, and sanctifying ceremonies. Yes. So, again, what we're dealing with here is where are we identified? Is the shisha, is the disciple identified with the physical body or with the subtle body? Or the Guru is here endeavoring to remind them to stay identified with the self. And we're going back to the very basic practices. In Viveka Chudamani, Shankara says, success in spiritual endeavors is entirely due to the degree of the qualifications of a good student, being adhikari. This is where the work is to be done. What are the qualifications of a fit student? Viveka, Vairagya, Shamadi Guna, Munushutta. So what do we practice? Viveka, a firm conviction in the intellect that Brahman alone is real, and the phenomenal world is Nitya, illusory, unreal, is known as discrimination between the real. So that's exactly what we were talking about before class this morning. All the stories the mind puts up, they are not real. Brahman alone is real. The phenomenal world, my body, mind, intellect, the objects, emotions, and thoughts are mitya, un real. They're just imagination. That's the first qualification when we need to work on. So understanding it in the book. Oh yeah, I know what the thing is. No, 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 how dare you talk like that to me? You know? No. <laughs> You're not discriminating. You're not doing the practice. Do you see the distinction? Yes. yes. Second qualification of a fit student, vairagya. That desire to give up all attachments to enjoyments. Here the word is bhokta, but it means experiences gained through the sense objects. So many of us can be a uh, Attached to our misery. Why would someone want to be attached to our misery? 
such as the human mind. So I can be attached to money or approval or whatever, but I can also be attached to my story. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. I keep going back there. I keep going back there. I keep going back. That's an attachment to our misery. It's part of how we're identified. So that desire to give up attachment to all enjoyments or experiences gained through the senses and all ideas of self, starting from the body up to and including the form of Brahma, the creator, meaning of the powerful person. This is the root of the practice. That's what we need to do. If I think I'm a person, I'm deluded. Ego will always say, resolve the struggle of ego. The problem is people, places, things, and conditions. The problem is I, the person, need to go from point A to point B. It's an illusion. Why would you use to thunder? Shut up and get out. With this in mind, when he says Shmriti here, most of these references, I think virtually all of them, are from Gita. So let's go through each one of them and see what, what, what he says. Can we go through each thought, please? Yeah. All gods verily are the self. So the infinite has many faces. Durga, it can be Krishna, it can be Lord Shiva, it can be Jesus, it can be Allah, it can be Buddha. These are just the masks that the infinite wears. What is the face of the infinite? It's a very famous Zen koan. What was your face before your mother's birth? Meaning, what's your original nature? That's your face. Next idea. All, uh, sorry, the self and the city of nine gates. Nine gates. So two eyes, two ears, two nostrils, a mouth, anus, genitals. That's nine. Meaning the body. What is it that peeps out? through the nine gates, making contact with the phenomenon. We're coming up on Halloween. So one of the words we have for the sense organs of the body is Gulaya. And I always think of a child playing ghost on Halloween see a kid with a sheet over them and two eye holes have been uh, torn, uh, cut out in the sheet. Take the sheet off, the eye holes in the sheet cannot see. They're holes. But the child inside sees through the holes. You have a Richard Dixon mask. Take it off. The mass cannot see. Likewise, the physical body has no sense of apparatus. It's only when the life principle functioning through the subtle body 
functions through the physical body that we make contact. Next idea. Know the individual self to be myself. Yes. I am Atma Brahma. This self is Brahma. That's what the Upanishad say. And Gita echoes. If you want to know who God is, find out who you are. Next idea. The same in all beings. So the self in me is not like the self in you. The self in me is the self in you. <clears throat> so I see the room from my viewpoint. You see it from yours. I'm aware of my body. You're aware of your body. I'm aware of my thoughts and feelings. You're aware your thoughts and feelings. But if you look behind your eyes and notice the body, it's just a vast empty space of awareness. And when I look behind my eyes, same thing. But there's not an infinite number of little purushas, a little independent awareness is running around. The best example I've been able to come up with is imagine there's a big piece of butcher paper and we put six pinholes in it. The room is dark. And you see six lights. Question is, are there six pen lights, one behind each hole, or is there one flashlight? From your side, it looks like six lights. There's a conscious being looking out of Abhiti. There's a conscious being looking out of Susu. But if each one of these pinholes had the capacity to introvert their attention. This pinhole says, oh, I'm a flashlight. What about you? What are you? Oh, I'm a flashlight too. Is my flashlight different than your flashlight? No. One prakasha, one light. Shining through every and the worms and the germs and the dogs and the frogs. There's only one of us here. Any thoughts on this? Next one. Next idea. The witness and approver. The witness and approver. What's the word for approver? Um, Not sure what he means by that. But when phenomena appears, awareness appears as witness. But it's only a witness when there's stuff to witness. In samadhi, it's not the witness. Just pure self evidence. I have no idea what he means by a proof, so we'll have to go on. Residing in all, sorry, uh, the supreme being is different. Yes, it's different but not different. So again, if we go to the microcosm, if you visualize a puppy dog, are you different than the puppy dog that you visualize? Well, kind of yes and kind of no. You're not the puppy dog. You're the one who sees the puppy dog with your imagination. Yet the puppy dog is nothing but your mind. 
here in the ice hockey. Whether you visualize a puppy dog or a rhinoceros or a brontosaurus, you do not change. This is the There's nothing to worry about. It's an old pop song, which I love. Nothing's going to harm you, not while I'm around. Remember that one? It's beautiful, lady. Nothing's going to I, in the midst of you, am mighty. As the Hebrew scripture says. You're safe. You're always safe. Next one. Residing in all bodies, but itself devoid of any. So we have this asparsha yoga, the term Gita uses. Asparsha, meaning untouched. Even though the body, mind, intellect functions because of Brahman contact, yoga, in truth, self is never touched by the world altered by the world, tainted by it. When we dream at night, it sure seems like I am in the dream. Whatever happens in the dream when I wake up, it never really happened to me just a play of my mind. This is no idea. Next idea. That's it. Next verse. Sa yadi bruya anya eva hamakya sukhi dukhi budkha sanskari anyo so Madhvilakshanaha asansari devaha tamaham balyupa haranam haranam skara dipi varanasham karma pishcha radhya sansara sagara dutti dutti tir shus Shurasmi Katamaham Sa Eveti. If he says, I am in bondage, liable to transmigration, ignorant, sometimes happy, sometimes unhappy, and am entirely different from him, he, the shining one who is dissimilar in nature to me and beyond transmigratory existence, is also different from me. I want to worship him through the actions pertaining to my caste and order of life by making presents and offering to him, offerings to him, and also by making salutations and the like. I am eager to cross the ocean of the world in this way. So how am I he himself? So we have this fundamental direct experience of those of us in the ego state. The Upanishads thunder, Tathwamasi, you are that. How can I be the I have a hard enough time keeping my desk clean. I can't get up enough of the willpower to do the dishes every morning. 
I'm at the effect of all the people who are doing naughty things to me in my life. I'm powerless. God is to be worshipped and adored. It's just nonsense. I am not that. Yet the scripture says you are that. Well, let's see. So, what we need to do is do what I call the cosmic striptease. You go to a Gucci Gucci show, the fellow, the Chippendale, the girl in the Gucci show takes off their clothes. So we have two things the individual microcosm, macrocosm, God. So how do we reconcile the scriptural statement of one of the So let's start our cosmic striptease. First, you have a physical body other than my abortion. But you are not the physical body, you are the knower. God has a physical body, but it's not the statue of Lord Shiva or Krishna or three-headed Shiva, four-armed Durga. The body of God is the Jagat, the creation itself. You have a sukshma, sharira, a subtle body, thoughts and feelings and memories. You are not your subtle body. You are the knower of the thoughts, knower of the feelings, knower of the memories. God has a subtle body. We call it the total mind, what I'm going to sum total of all the thoughts and feelings that could ever be thought, that ever will be thought. It's not some God out there doing it. When we say total mind, we literally mean that, the totality of all the minds in the universe. And the sum is greater than and different than the individual parts. You and I, to some degree, experience that every time we go to, say, a dance concert or a rock concert or a sporting event. There you are at the sporting event, jumping up and down. <laughs> All these feelings. You never do that at work. Or we read on or see on the news about these uh, stampedes, people get panic and they trample people and stuff like that. We would never do that as individuals. So we have these group consciousnesses. Our minds we share. Take that to the infinite. The total group is the mind of God. Hiranya Harva, literally the golden egg. You have a causal body, God and Asharya, some total of your vasanas. You are not your vasanas. You are not your causal body. God has a Causal. 
term we use is Ishwara. Normally we translate Ishwara as the Lord. But it comes from the root itch itchiti, which means to wish or to will or to intend. what the Lord is, the total blossom. Today's actions were caused by yesterday's, uh, or uh, yesterday's vasanas, caused by the day before, caused by the day before, it goes all the way back to the Big Bang. Start of this huge chain reaction, set in motion, beginning of time and right now. This is why Swamiji used to say, it's a cosmos, not a chaos. In fact, the universe is very intelligent, organized and ruled by law. Gravity doesn't change direction from day to day. Speed of light is a constant. Now, renouncing the sukshma or the stula sharira gross body, sukshma sharira subtle body, karana sharira causal body. You are witnessing consciousness. Pure awareness. Chibakasha, the space. Pure illumination. Renouncing the creation, the phenomenal world. Renouncing the total mind, meaning withdrawing our attention from it. Renouncing even Ishwara, the Lord, the total Vasana, the ground of being, the whole creation we call Nama, which is consciousness, the first of the Mahavakyas, the Nyan Brahma, Nama is consciousness. That Brahman, that self, that you experience as the witness of awareness, they are the same. So that is how we reconcile the statement that one is in you. At the gross level, obviously not true. At the deepest level, yes. Next verse. Acharyo Bruya Naivam Somya Pratipatu Marhasi Pratishitvadhe Brahma tam paradatyo anyatrat mano Brahma veda. Mrityo ha sa mrityu man mapnoti ya iha naneva pashyati ityeva matya. The teacher should say, You ought not, my child, regard it so because a doctrine of difference is forbidden. 
In reply to the question, why is it forbidden? The following other Shruti texts may be cited. He who knows that Brahman is one and he is another does not know Brahman. He who regards the Brahmanical caste as different from his, himself is rejected by that caste. One who views Brahman as if having diversity in it goes from death to death and so on. So again, our ultimate Brahman, our ultimate authority is scripture. That may be useful to those born in India, raised as Brahmins, who are familiar with it, who out of faith are devoted to the truth of the scriptures. <clears throat> Not a whole lot different than the evangelicals who take the Bible literally. We don't need to go there. These scriptural statements, while they are true, are certainly valid for those who have great faith in them. But for the rest of us, we can come to see the truth of them through our own insight. Listen carefully, Shrinahu. All the great scriptural statements, all of the great stories that explain ultimate reality. Where do they come from? We say, oh, they come from God. Shruti, we just hear it from the infinite. Yes, but not really. It means it comes out of the direct experience of great mystics. Who have gone deep within, quieted the mind, and then returning from that, endeavor to articulate them as they directly experience. <coughs> Any thoughts on this? So if you can directly believe it, because scripture says it, that's wonderful. Um, Nisargalata Maharaj was once asked about his own sadhana. He was only with his guru for a couple of years. And what was his sadhana? His guru said, you are the infinite, you are that. And the Sargadatta Maharaj believed him and did sadhana to verify. This is the sadhana, it's very simple. So, what the verse is saying is, if a person thinks they are a person, I'm the son or the daughter of so-and-so, I was born in this caste or this culture, I have this problem, bad value, I own a lot of this, I don't own any of that. Here, the scripture is saying, forget it. Cut from a seed. You are that. The shorthand for this practice is called Neti Neti. Not itty, not this. We never say neti, 
and we never say nati nati nati. It's always nati nati. The two. Why? Because the two things we must negate microcosmic world of phenomena, macrocosmic world of phenomena. Nati, not the physical body. Nati, not the jumping. Nati, not the subtle body. Nati, not the soul body. Nati, not the causal body, the last not even the Ishwara. Instead, God from a seed. Any thoughts on this? Next verse. Eta eva shutyo bheda prab. Pratipatte sansara gamanaha gamanam darshayanti. These shrutis show that transmigratory existence is the sure result of the acceptance of the reality of difference. So, meaning, what causes transmigration going from incarnation to incarnation? You don't need to believe this, but I'll just set it forward what the teaching is. The cause of transmigration, the physical body is an instrument for the satisfaction of our desires. It's rooted in the deeply rooted conviction this didn't work, I'll be happy when. It'll be better if. Now, you don't need to believe in reincarnation. Let's just look at this life. If this job isn't working, maybe I should get a different job. That's what would make me happy. I'm unhappy where I live. I'm unhappy with my friend. Let me get new friends. What? I didn't say anything. <laughs> I thought you just made a funny sound. Oh, I thought you were saying something. <laughs> but that's what ego does. It goes from incarnation, meaning a world of experience, always based in the idea that unhappiness, dukkha, and happiness, sukha, is external. Fake news. Alternative facts. Um, illusion, by Tatya, false, Anitya, not eternal. So we can look at reincarnation a simply way to talk about it. Drive of ego to change circumstances in order to be happy. It's very carefully. Yourself does not reincarnate. Freedom from rebirth in the end 
doesn't mean something happens to the jiva, the individual soul, so it doesn't have to come back. The human mind realizes that it was never born in the first place. And the human mind gives up. It's struggling. It's kartavya. So we don't spend as much time anymore going through, oh, I was a janitor in the pyramids in one life and I got crushed by a stone. You know? We don't go there. But what we do, oh, I'm doing trauma therapy for my family of origin. It's no different. Knock yourself out. If you want to go live in the world of cause and effect, become it with its tragedies. Go ahead. I have a question. Yes. I had been going to ACA and I see. I have a position. You have a, what? A, a position, a service position, trusted servant position. And, and I thought, oh, I don't have to go back anymore. And then I thought, oh, I have a service position. <laughs> and then I thought, is that, would that be my 12 step? Well, I would only tell you what I would do. First of all, I assume the service position is time limited. Yeah. What, six months? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's your duty. And go to the meetings, not what am I going to get out of it? But what can I bring to it? And then if your service position expires, if you want to no longer attend, that's up to you. But if you make a commitment, fulfill your commitment. That's just good yoga and good manners. Yeah. And it, is it because I also just want to leave what I'm feeling or what I'm recognizing? and want to I, I'm not catching the question I, here. I, I I just want to share what I recognize. And I know that people are not ready to hear what I recognize. No. I can only share with you what I do. I do not talk about yoga by and large at an AA meeting. But how do you transmit your hope or your... I talk about it within the frame of the steps. I talk about, I think the heart of the program is the third step, turning your will and your life over to the care of God. That's good yoga. Yeah. You know, I talk about the 11th step. I'll say something like, you know, I need it, so I work a very intense 11th step, sought through prayer and meditation to improve my conscious contact with God as I understand God. They don't know that I'm talking about samadhi. They don't need to know that. But if they pray and meditate, it'll improve their lives. So I could do my sadhana like that or sure. something like that and not. And remember, who you are speaks much louder than anything you can say. Most of the time in AA meetings today, I say very little. But I go deep in the meditation. 
if I sense that there's a lot of suffering in the room, I do talk. What? Oh, that's you know, uh, real life experience. I go to my Saturday night meeting and I'm just feeling it, you know. Oh, I don't really belong here. Oh, you know, these are all weird people. And then I'm like, wait a minute. That's not my thought. That's that's in the group mind. These are body on people who are very alienated. Okay. Another one of my things for me, part of my sadhana, the awareness of suffering is an invitation to prayer. Oh, okay. The Lord wants me to do something. So breathe in all that alienation. Breathe out the sense that it's all God and it's all good. We're all one. Breathe in all the agitation. Breathe out peace and suffering. Nobody needs to know you're doing it. Yeah, sounds good. Now, does it do any good? As the Dalai Lama said when he was asked if he did Tonglin, he said yes. And the interviewer says, do you think it does any good? And he thought for a moment, he says, I don't know, but I feel better when I do it. <laughs> I just love that answer. Yeah. yeah. And the beauty of it, am I fooling myself? Am I really anxious and alienated? And it's not the group mind. In the end, it doesn't matter. Because the practice is the same. Do you see that? Yeah. Who cares where it came from? But by and large, your life in the, the realm of Yamahara transactions will work better if you show up as a woman of your word. That's really important. When you say you're going to do something, do it. We call this satyam. Satyam means truthfulness, straightforward. It means also integrity. And if you're at home and you're doing sankalpa in order to heal a friend or change this, and then you turn around and say you're going to do X, Y, and Z or show up at A, B, and C, and you don't, means deep inside you don't believe your own word. Do you see that? Yeah. You disempower your son, Kalpa, mm -hmm. if you do not live a life of integrity. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, the horse in the direction is going. It's well, you know, if we're, we're, endeavoring to have the single pointedness of mind so that our intention tends to manifest. If we do things that conflict or contradict it, the unconscious has no sense of humor. It doesn't pick and choose. You either live with integrity or you don't. So we strive for it. We strive for it. Now, you can change an agreement, which is different than breaking an agreement. Mm -hmm. I ran into this fellow on the bus who was the literature person for uh, one of my meetings. Well, I just quit going because I'm going to a seven o'clock meeting because it's earlier. You know, I didn't say a word. It's not the way I would have had. He just stopped coming. But then I have another friend, Mauricio. Some of you know Mauricio. I should probably never mind. <laughs> a person I know <laughs> was taking a very long trip, six week trip. So what did he do? He says, I'm going to be out of the country for such an amount of time. We're going to need a substitute secretary. Anybody willing to do it? Oh, no. So he handled it. He changed the agreement, which is different than breaking an agreement. Do you see that? Yeah. Yes. And that is available to you. But, um, 
I think it's always good. If you say you're going to fulfill a commitment, fulfill it. Yeah, absolutely. And people will trust you in life because they know you're a dependable person and you're no drama and you suit up and show up. That's one of the things that helps make this world what the world is. Any thoughts on this? All right, next verse. Abheda prati patte shcha moksham darshayanti sahasra shaha sa atma tattvamasi iti paramatma bhavam vidhyaya acharyavan purusho veda ityuktva tasya tava deva chiram iti moksham darshayanta bheda vidhyaya vidhyana vidhyana deva satya Hissa Ataskara Sieva Dahadia Bhavana Bhavavat Sansara Bhavam Darshayanti Drishtante Dena Bheda Darshanada Satya Hissa Sansara Gaman Darshayanti Daskara Seva Dahadish Dahadrishtan Dena. That, on the other hand, liberation results from the acceptance of the reality of non difference is borne out by thousands of shruthis. For example, after teaching that the individual self is not different from the Supreme One in the text, that is the self, thou art that. And after saying, a man who has a teacher knows Brahman, the Shrutis proved liberation to be the result of the knowledge of the reality of non-difference only by saying, a knower of Brahman has to wait only so long as he is not merged in Brahman. That transmigratory existence comes to an absolute cessation in the case of one who speaks the truth that difference has no real existence is illustrated by the example of one who was not a thief and did not get burnt by grasping a heated hatchet. That one who, on the other hand, speaks what is not true, i.e. the reality of difference, continues to be in the mundane condition is illustrated by the example of a thief who got burnt. I do not know the story of a thief who gets burnt. So unfortunately, I cannot address that. Uh, I'll have to research that. But the basic thing to understand is the sense of individuality, the feeling that I'm a person. It's real with a small r. Certainly experience it, just like I experience being in the dream. But what is it that proves to me that the dream state is unreal? And there's a shift in identity. The dream world, and the dream me, and the dream body. It's just a projection of my mind. Now, this sense of individuality, jiva bhavana, is the term that Godapada uses in the Mandukya Paragraph. It's my favorite. I do not like to use the term jivatma, the individual soul. Is no such thing. What we have is jiva bhavana, this 
deeply rooted conviction experience. It's almost like hypnotism. I think I'm the person. But it could only be experienced when you don't look at it. Awareness functioning through the subtle intellect, then out through the mind and the senses into the world. There's the assumption in the Vijnana Maya Kosha, the subtlest part of the world, I'm a person. It's where I attribute to the self the qualities of the not self. This is called adhyasa. Superimposition. But if I slow the mind down and I'm willing to renounce all my identifications, and I have this introversion of the attentive faculty, and see if you can find this supposed Jivatma. This individual me. And when you inquire, it falls. And you see what's really there. Oh my gosh, Jim, there's nothing there. It's not really nothing, no thing. has no form, shape, size, color, qualities. Yeah, it's me. A hum, I experience it as I. And I have Bob, I have BA. Now listen carefully. The shift in identity from the dreamer to the waker is a gross shift in identity. A wang when you wake up. The shift in identity from Jeeva Bhavana to Brahman, though incredibly profound is very subtle. If you slow down, look behind your eyes, notice the known. Do you see that you are that space of pure one? Where did Aditi Susu go? Bring her back. Just start thinking about your problems. I need to listen. I need to go there. I, which I is doing that. Stop. Injure what your intention is. Investigate yourself. Atma vichara. There's no person there. Who is it who's also worried? This is stupid mind stuff. It's not real. We do this over and over and over. Until the mind quits throwing up doubt. Yeah. 
there is no person who's going to say, I didn't realize, I didn't know. No, what is it that the mind grasps? No personal sense of self. I'm not a knower of Brahman. Can be Brahman. Now, language will fail us. Go there. All right, one more. Oh, by the way, the the story of the hatchet and the thief is in the Chandogya Upanishad. Oh, does he does he it's, does yeah. he tell us what it is? Not the story itself, but it's um, notated. Ta eha vyadro va itya dina cha abhed darshana. Sa Sarat Bhavati Ityukva Tadvipa Ritena Bheda Darshena Sansaragamanam Darshayanti Atha Ye Anya Tha Ato Viduran Viduranya Raja Naste Kshay Shaya Loka Bhavanti Iti Prati Shakam Tasmat Vrishe Vaiva Mavadiha Brahmana Putro Adonya Baha Sansari Paramatma Vilakshana Iti The Shruti text commencing with Whatever these creatures are here, whether a tiger and similar other texts, after asserting that one becomes one's own master, i.e. Brahman, by the knowledge of the reality of non-difference, show that one continues to remain in the transmigratory condition in the opposite case, as the result of the acceptance of the reality of difference, saying, Knowing differently from this, they get other beings for their masters and reside in perishable regions. Such statements are found in every branch of the Veda. It, it was therefore certainly wrong on your part to say that you were the son of a Brahmana, that you belonged to such and such a lineage, that you were subject to transmigration and that you were different from the Supreme Self. So don't have false humility. Westerners are not as plagued by this as Indians. In Hindu culture, the notion of self-realization, of being a Mahatma, of being a saint, is so revered. Many of us think, oh, well, I'm, I'm just a worm. I'm just a sinful person making my way through life. That's for other kinds of beings. We Westerners, we're stupid and smart. We don't have that idea. Why not me? Have it. I tell you, self-realization is not difficult. Even scripture says this. Krishna and Gita will say, easy to perform, though it is very rare. Main reason that it's so rare is nobody wants it. And even if you hear about it, we have so many superstitions about it. It's all the difference to come in contact with a woman 
Tripura Rahasyam says the root cause of liberation is sadhu sangha, association with the wise. Show yourself. But the price tag is we give up being a person. All of that entails. If you hang on to being a person, no matter how good, you will suffer the ills of a transmigratory existence. Meaning, I come and go up and down, suffering this, enjoying that. Only freedom is to get. It's not making this up. It's my experience. It's also what the scriptures say. All right, we'll end here. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamukachate Purnasya Purnamabhaya Purnameva Shishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Namaha Bye. See you all next week. Thank you all.